Welcome to the Recession Proof Investing Series, where we have top experts sharing tips and strategies on creating lasting success and financial freedom. I'm Keisha Bailey, CEO of Profit Jumpstarter and your host. And today I'm joined by Tom Corley. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Keisha. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Never better. Everything is perfect in my life. I got no complaints. Nice, nice. That's great. Uh, so, Tom, uh, could you share a bit about the work that you do and your background, just so we can get to know you a little better? Sure. We'll jump in. So, I'm a, I'm a CPA. I'm a certified financial planner. I have a master's degree in tax. Uh, I, um, I'm a partner in a, a, a bit, fairly big financial planning firm, and I run Seraphis and Company, which is a CPA firm. Uh, but my passion has really been... Uh, since really 2010, I suppose, my rich habits research, you know, which I started back in 2004, finished my uh, rich habits study, which in 2009, which uh, and that was a study on 233 wealthy people and 128 poor people. Uh, I was my, my goal in the study was to answer two questions. Number one was, why is it that some people are rich and, and some people are poor? And the second question is, what do rich people and poor people do from the minute that they wake up in the morning to the minute that they put their head on, on the pillow at night? And uh, what I discovered in my study was that uh, I tracked something like 360 data points. Mm -hmm. uh, most of those data points were habits. And I knew nothing about habits when I went into my study. I had to become a habit expert pretty quickly because of all of the... Um, the media exposure in my study, my Rich Habits study received, thanks to my yeah. book, Rich Habits. And, um, and so uh, now, you know, fast forward to, to now, and I'm, I'm among the top uh, experts in the world in, in terms of habits. And yeah. I also have a, a very strong research background in um, neuroplasticity, uh, neurology, the, you know, basically the brain, uh, because that's where habits are formed in the brain. So mm -hmm. I've written several books, my, probably the best book on, on how everything you wanted to know about habits is uh, Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. That, that book became a huge bestseller when yeah. I released it in 2016 and uh, it continues to, I think it's almost outselling Rich Habits, which is hard to believe, but. Wow. Yeah, yeah, ma mainly outside the US. Um, also in the U.S. it's closed, but outside the U.S. and in, in India, China, China it's a huge hit. Uh, so yeah, we're uh, it's just been a busy, a busy eleven years for me in uh, in sharing my research and the things that matter to people on on how to build wealth. Nice, nice. And so let's probably jump a little bit into it. What do you define as a rich person versus a poor person? Well, in my study, uh, I set the bar at 3.2 million in net investable assets and, and $160,000 or more in annual income. Mm. Uh, that was the rich people. So that was the minimum. In order to be in my study, you had to have those two things. Mm -hmm. For the poor people, it was you had to make uh, $35,000 or less and you had to have less than $5,000 in, in net investable assets, basically cash in the bank. So if yeah. you met those two criteria, uh, you were considered uh, poor in my study. Okay, interesting, interesting. And I guess the middle ground is just like middle, middle America, just kind of- Yeah, you know, you can look at it, like my, everything that I am doing is really to help lift poor people up out of poverty and maybe into wealth and also to help lift middle class people out of the middle class and into wealth. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And so let's jump into it and then discuss the four paths to wealth. Sure. Uh, yeah. So this is an interesting discovery that I made uh, probably about three years ago. I had to go back to my research a uh, number of times over the years, mainly because of media, mm -hmm. the, question, the questions that the media had that I knew I had answers to, but I didn't have 
uh, on my research summary. So I constantly was updating my research summary uh, to help the media, uh, you know, with the uh, answers that they were looking for. And one of the discoveries I made uh, back, uh, I guess about three years ago, was that my um, wealthy people in my study, the self-made millionaires in particular, because 76% of the, the millionaires in my study were self-made, 24% mm -hmm. had inherited some or all of their wealth. Yeah. You know? So, it, and that's interesting because in itself, because that means anybody can get wealthy. Because yes. Out of the, uh, out, out of that uh, 76%, 41% had come from poverty and the rest had come from the wow. middle class. Right. Yeah. That's very so, encouraging. Yeah. yeah. So what I, what I discovered in, in going back on my research was that the self-made millionaires, the 177 individuals that were the self-made millionaires in my study, they had, I really was able to break them down into four paths that they pursued. Mm -hmm. One was the saver investor path. The second was the big company climber path. The third was the virtuoso or expert path. And the fourth was the dreamer or entrepreneur path. Uh, so, um, the, the, you know, those, this is revolutionary in the sense that, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You yeah. can become wealthy uh, pursuing wealth in the four different ways. Uh, and uh, each path has its own unique requirements, personality traits, and rich habits. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, you, if you want to know whether or not you should be pursuing wealth as a saver investor, big company climber, virtuoso, or, or entrepreneur, uh, how, how do you do that, right? How do you yeah. know? How does anybody know? So I had to come up with a quiz uh, that asks uh, specific questions and uh, you, you answer the, the questions and then it will actually tell you what path you should be pursuing in terms of wealth. And, the, and why is that important? Well, it's important because I spent 10 years climbing the uh, big company ladder. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I ended up uh, getting uh, frustrated and tired with the, the BS, the political yeah, <laughs> politics involved in, in, in climbing the, the big company ladder. And, and so I ended up buying my own firm. Be I just didn't want, I just didn't like uh, the fighting that goes on. When you get to a certain level, you don't see it so much in middle management, you see it a little bit, but when you get to the next level where you're actually a senior executive in a yeah. company, those senior executives are all vying to be promoted to the next level. And so they will, I hate to say this, they will do just about anything to, to get, get there. there. And that, if that means stepping all over you and, um, you know, try, trying to uh, spread negative gossip about you, there are some that will do that. And I, I experienced that. They, they, you know, I had, I had two or three individuals who just uh, were constantly trying to pull me down from my climb up the ladder. Yeah. And, and, I, and I know I have uh, conversations, I've had conversations with other big company climbers and they tell me the exact same thing happened to them. Uh, so they were able to, uh, I guess, overcome the, the, the culture of politics that's inherent in climbing the ladder. But uh, I wasn't, I, didn't, I couldn't tolerate it. And, um, and so yeah. I, you know, I basically wasted 10 years of, of my life. And so when I took the quiz, yeah, uh, I, uh, I learned that I was 93% uh, of my responses indicated that I was, I should have been following the entrepreneur dreamer path. 70% of my responses said I should be following the big company climber path. And, and I guess that's why I, I, I pursued the big company climber path because yeah. I was, it wasn't that far off, but you know, one one of the uh, a couple of the variables in there were, you know, you just have to answer no to them, and and you really know that you shouldn't be on that path, and and so uh, I've had other people, a hundred percent of the individuals who sent me an email after taking the quiz, 
said that they um, uh, that that they had it was accurate because they were on the right path. They had made mistakes like I did and, and discovered their path later in life, and they found themselves maybe being entrepreneurs, maybe be, being big company climbers or virtuosos or saver investors. Yeah. And so when they when they uh, the results of the test, the quiz uh, indicated that they were all on the right path. So um, we've got this quiz. It's it's part of the it's part of the Wealth Academy uh, course that I'm going to eventually release to the public at some point. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and and this 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 quiz and, and, and the four paths to wealth is something that's being uh, transformed into a gamification. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's sort of like a yeah. video game, right? right? Yeah. They're, they're, and it, it's when you anybody who wants to learn something, the best way to learn is there's three components to the to forming the best memory. One is um, that obviously you, you study the material. Number two is that you engage your cerebellum, which is motor activity, uh, that because the cerebellum will send out dendrites into uh, the brain and create uh, a lasting memory. Yeah. And the third is emotional memory. So, so the gamification, people caught on to my idea that this should be gamified. And so we're doing it in, uh, in Australia and in uh, the United States. That's going to be exciting. I love the, the fact that you get to choose based on the, the quiz, which path is for you. Because a lot of times today you'll see someone doing, following their own path and you say, well, that must be the way to get there. Let me follow them. But does it really align with you? And is it the, the path for you? So I like the fact that each person is able to go through the quiz to find what works for them. Versus That's right. Versus yeah, it's basically, it's basically how I like to describe it. It's basically taking your ladder and putting it on your wall. Not taking your ladder and putting it on your parents' wall. Mm -hmm. Not taking your ladder and putting it on a friend's wall who got rich. Or somebody else's wall that you yeah. know. It's your wall. Uh, this is what yeah. the course does. Is it tells you what wall you should be climbing. Yes, that, that's very, very good because I feel that's what's needed today for persons to kind of more identify with themselves and get that fulfillment in their own path, not someone else's, right? So that's, that's very good. And then the fact that it opens us up to broader thinking because people will think, oh, the one way to wealth is I need to have a business. But maybe I love working and I thrive climbing that corporate ladder like I'm really cut out for it. So maybe that's a better option for me. But because I see everyone else having their own business, I, I think, OK, I need to be doing that as well. Yeah, well, it's a good point because um, the, uh, the, the way my, my, uh, my results of the quiz uh, fell out, mm -hmm. shook out was, uh, I was 93%. Uh, in, I should be a, an entrepreneur. 78% uh, virtuoso. Yeah. And 70% um, a big company climber. Now, interestingly, I, I, I have. I'm a CPA. I'm a certified financial planner. I have a master's degree in taxation. So I did for a long time pursue the virtuoso route, but yeah. in a big company environment. You know, and yeah. when they kept promoting me and promoting me, that's when I, I butted up against the politics and uh, which I couldn't take. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, the, the virtuoso actually lifted me up the ladder and then I, I hit a nice. wall, my own wall uh, that of intolerance and I, I, I parachuted out of there. Uh, but I should really the two paths that I should have pursued. The only two paths should have been the entrepreneur path, number one, and number two as a fallback, the virtuoso path. So I kind of stumbled into that on my own. Yeah. But, uh, but the, thanks to the rich habits research and the study and, and the material and the data that I've gathered, uh, it's clear to me that uh, I'm fortunate that I actually wound up on the entrepreneur path. I'm fortunate, I'm lucky. Uh, that wasn't intentional. Yeah. You know? So if I had this quiz when I was in high school or college or yeah. just starting out my career, I could have been intentional. I could have 
actually had more of a, a plan and I would be way ahead in terms of the amount of wealth that I've accumulated far, far and away. I'd, I'd probably have 10 times as much wealth. Wow. And so where can persons find this quiz? I'm sure you piqued everyone's interest then. Where can they find the quiz? Yeah, I, I just released the quiz. I just released the quiz on my Rich Habits website, richhabits.net. Uh, so it's, I think uh, it's, it's it, it, the title of, of the piece that I released mm -hmm. was, Are You on the Right Career Path? And so yeah. you can click on that and take the quiz and find out. Um, I had a woman yesterday because I was on a call for the, for the gamification uh, initiative yeah. uh, who took my, my quiz and she came out with 60% that she should be in the big company, Climber Path. And guess what path she had been on for 30 years? The big company, Climber Path. And she was wildly successful. <laughs> you, you know, so... It's not, it, it's not an accident uh, that, mm -hmm. that she's successful. She chose the right path, but she also was a lucky one. You know, she was lucky. She didn't, she didn't know she was, should be pursuing that path. She yeah. took a gamble. And uh, so, the one, you know, her. I found in my research that about 5% of the population becomes really wealthy. And that 5% are the people that are on the right path. Yes, yeah. And your work helps them to get there. So that's amazing. Yeah, right? I'm trying to get that 5% up to maybe 10%. Yeah. Uh, because, the, you know, not everybody, unfortunately, there's about uh, 30, 30 to 40% of the, of the population that actually uh, takes an interest in growing and improving and becoming better. That's a good number. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so... Uh, th that my target is really that, that 30 to 40 percent. Yeah. And so post pandemic, as we enter into this new world that is filled with uncertainty, what would be possibly three main tips that you would want to share with persons on the path to wealth creation? What are some rich habits they possibly could implement in their life? Well, you know, many people are still uh, working remotely. And I believe they're going to continue to work part-time remotely at least two days a week. Like That's a what I'm hearing from, from, yeah. from my, from my uh, close relationships at, at big companies like J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley and, and um, Moody's and some other firms in New York City that they're, they're migrating to a part-time office environment. Okay. Uh, and so what, what that means is you're going to have more time. You're not going to have to commute. And, and when you work in New York around here in the metropolitan area, your commute is about three hours to four hours a day. Yeah. It's just, just the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. They're going to have that extra three or four hours at least two days a week. And so what are you going to do with that three or four hours? Are you going to watch Netflix? Maybe you're going to exercise more, which is a rich habit. Yeah. But what you should be doing is engaging in growth habits. Uh, the the growth habits, the rich habits that are growth habits are reading to learn. Now you want to learn, uh, and, and in my study, the self-made millionaires did a minimum of 30 minutes, but the ones that were uber successful and had a lot of wealth, they were devoting about two hours a day to reading. Wow. Re reading for educational purposes to, uh, that was related to their career. I like and, that you, you specified that because some person would think, oh, I'm reading, you know, I'm reading on the gram. I'm reading my Facebook feed. Yeah, <laughs> Very yeah. Different. Harry, Harry, Pot, Harry Pot is not going to get you to well. <laughs> right. right? Uh, and, so, and so they were reading specific material that would help them grow and become better in their field. Yeah. Uh, now, there are also individuals who are skill-based, wealthy because they have certain innate talents that they... Uh, transformed into skills and those individuals uh, they have to practice their skills three to four hours a day the ones who are wealthy that's what they did yeah. and um, so you know skill based means you have to engage in repetitive practice of your core skills just so you can maintain your skills or improve upon them but there's also analytical practice which is you practice subsets of your core skills. An example is like Roger Federer, who's a tennis player. 
he he'll hit. Um, and Ivan I've, Ivan Lendl did the same thing. I think Roger Federer took a page out of Ivan Lendl's book. Uh, he would hit 500 backhands down the line, 500 wow. backhands cross court, 500 backhands down the middle of the court. He would do the same thing with volleys and serves and 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 overheads. So they were practicing subsets of their core skills. And yeah. on top of that, what makes analytical practice uh, valuable is when you have feedback from somebody, somebody who is also happens to be uh, an expert or virtuoso, they will give you feedback like a coach. Yeah, uh, that's why that's why coaches are so important. And I have a speaking coach. Uh, he provides not necessarily feedback on how I give my my presentations, but uh, on how I approach the the promotion, the marketing of, of my my speak my speaking business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so everybody needs a coach and even me who's, you know, all over the world and selling a lot of books and, yeah, uh, and, you know, I, I have a coach. I've, I've had it for two years now on the speaking circuit anyway, the speaking business. Uh, so these coaches give you feedback. They tell you how to make, how to do whatever you're doing a little bit better than you're mm -hmm. doing it. And, and they also point out some flaws that they see. That, so that helps you uh, eliminate those flaws or minimize you know, mm -hmm. those flaws. So, so there's, you know, the, helps the growth you to get, It helps you to get to where you want to be sooner, right? Because you get to avoid some of those yeah. mistakes and the pitfalls. Yeah, yeah so, so the path to wealth, most people are, are, are either poor or middle class. That's most people. And so you're at point A. You want to get to point B. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, the difference between point A and point B is growth, is change. Yeah. You need to transform yourself into the person you need to be in order for success and wealth to visit you. Yeah, for sure. So these are useful tips. What's needed, I think, then is implementation of these tips, right? Because knowledge also needs execution to be able to see that result. And so this has been amazing. Tom, thank you so much for sharing this with the world. I'm sure... The audience is much richer just from all of the strategies that have been shared today. Well, it's my pleasure. I love sharing my research and helping people, you know, realize their dreams and their goals. And that's, you know, that's my mission in life is to lift people up. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Keisha.